two, three! Happy 50th Wagner! Congratulations, W.P. Wagner, on 50 years of excellence. I'm Darrell Robertson, superintendent of Edmonton Public Schools, and I actually used to work at W.P. Wagner years ago. I think it was in 1999-ish. Um, it, uh, it was a wonderful uh, opportunity for me. It was actually my first job in, uh, in, in, in administration, and I actually had a chance to teach at Wagner for a, a while as well. So it's a, it's a wonderful school, uh, so many years of excellence, so many years of change for W.P. Wagner. So just on behalf of everyone in the district, uh, we say congratulations on 50 years of excellence, and here's to another 50 more. On March 19th, 1964, the trustees of Edmonton Public School named the newest high school to be built, W.P. Wagner High School. Mr. William Philip Wagner was about to retire as superintendent after nine years. He started his teaching career in 1916. His career was interrupted by service in two world wars and by university studies where he received a Bachelor of Arts and a Master's in Education. Mr. Wagner fostered the concept of a unique school that added a new dimension to education that was missing from the traditional model. His wish was realized with the official opening of W.P. Wagner High School on January 31, 1969. In the initial 23 years, W.P. Wagner Vocational High School employed a unique philosophy and curriculum that provided students with the technical and attitudinal skills to transition directly to employment after graduation or to pursue further education at post-secondary institutions such as NATE. Students who did not necessarily wish to pursue the traditional high school educational path and who wished to obtain vocational training were recommended to the three-year Wagner program by their respective junior high schools. In each of the three years, every student attended half days in a vocational setting and half days in academic and option courses consisting of English, math, science, human relations, and physical education, as well as selected options such as music, drama, and driver training. In year one, each student was asked to select six vocational areas to experience on an exploratory basis. Selections were made from 12 occupational areas, automotives, beauty culture, building construction, building maintenance, business education, commercial art, drafting, foods, graphic arts, horticulture, institutional services, and metals. In year three, students were asked to select the one area in which they would concentrate their studies and hone their skills. During the third year, each student engaged in customer service work and was also assigned a work-study placement in a local company, business, or industry. From this, they received a very meaningful experience and an evaluation from real-life employers. Upon graduation, each student received a diploma, which highlighted the vocational area in which they had received specialized training. It's important to note that all academic courses followed the Alberta Curriculum of Studies, and all vocational courses were approved by Alberta Education. This ensured that besides employment, students could also pursue further fields of endeavor, such as applying to post-secondary institutions, apprenticeship, challenging trade exams, and enrolling in grade 12. On September 3rd, 1968, W.P. Wagner High School opened its doors to 800 registered students and approximately 75 teachers. The official opening ceremonies were held on January 31, 1969, with over 3,000 people in attendance. The first principal was Elmer S. Gish from 1968 to 1969. Mr. Gish was so proud of how the students enhanced the reputation of this fine school. He appreciated the increasing student participation in many activities and good school spirit. He believed that pride and involvement enlivened extracurricular programs and encouraged students to put more heart and enthusiasm into the important business of finishing their education. They set worthwhile goals and worked hard to reach them. Hi, my name is Glenn Norby and uh, I was here in Wagner when it opened in 1968. Uh, teachers from industry were in, uh, given an opportunity to go to university and get teaching certificates and they were credited with s uh, some of their time in the field, uh, the vocational field, which they'd spent many years in, uh, were journeymen, 
in their own right or master craftsmen and they went to the university to become teachers. And so when Wagner opened, you had a very strong, well-trained uh, uh, and experienced staff. What was very important was that all third-year students had to go out into industry in the final uh, month of the third year, and uh, they were on a work-study program. And they got practical uh, uh, experience in, in the industry. And that was one of the reasons why this school was built where it was built. It was built in an industrial district so that access to industries would be on our doorstep. And this was the first graduating class of W.P. Wagner High School, 1969. These students have started in a pilot program at Mackay Avenue School before transferring for their grade 12 year. The second principal was Daniel P. Stetsko from 1970 to 1976. He said, we have made a great deal of progress in the student involvement groups which reflect the spirit and participation of all students. Our sports program is the envy of many schools, particularly in weightlifting and wrestling. Our graduates are the salesmen of our school and are well suited to be our ambassadors. Visitors to this city from all over the world and the rest of Canada invariably request a tour of this school to see for themselves the accomplishments of our students and staff. W.P. Wagner chose the warrior as their mascot to pay homage to that most special breed of person, one who faces challenges head on and triumphs in the face of overwhelming adversity. A person whose bravery is matched only by the heart they possess. A person who epitomizes strength of character. All of these strengths are perfectly represented in the traditional wardrobe of the warrior. The cape to symbolize knowledge. The leg protectors to symbolize understanding. The breastplate and the eagle as symbols of honor and determination. And the helmet which is possibly the most important piece of the warrior's uniform, to symbolize wisdom. For what good are the rest of these traits without the wisdom to wield them? One of our early warriors, Ken White, was a welding student at the time. He was fitted for armor made by his fellow welding students. The warrior presided over special school events. The warrior spirit lives on in all we do. And somebody, and I don't remember who decided, why don't we take what these kids make and go into the malls and show people what these kids are capable of? And I can remember one story where a guy came by and one of the kids had made something out of woodwork or in metal shop. And he said, you made that in school? And the kid said, yeah. He says, I wish I could have done that when I went to school. And that seemed to change the whole atmosphere here because after that they knew they were going to be successful and they knew they had a career, they had a future, they had a career. Horticulture had a banana tree. And the banana tree, we had a tour coming from New, New, New Brunswick. And so the banana, they took the bananas off the banana tree and they put a cluster of potatoes up there. And they came through with the tour and they said, what's this? And they said, well, in Alberta, we don't mine potatoes in the ground, we just grow them on trees and pick them, they're a lot easier. So they took a whole bunch of pictures of that. <laughs> and Ralph Kugelstadt was the plumbing teacher. And I met him maybe 25 years ago and he says, Otto, the kids keep phoning me and asking me if I want to come to work for them. They all own their own plumbing shops. <laughs> and, uh, my name's Brian Cleland and I was a student uh, in 1974 through 76, graduated in 76. And I'm bringing back memories here of uh, the horticulture program and we also uh, sold uh, poinsettias at Christmas and also did flower arranging and things like that so it gave us a broad experience of crops and and uh, all the sales and everything that went on with it uh, all through that time but the bedding plants was the one that was the big thing I remember you know sales of uh, all day and we'd be putting plants out for the people and people would be driving up and they'd expect it every year and uh, the community really supported it. Uh, we also were responsible for looking after interior plantscapes in businesses around the neighborhood. Uh, one of the ones was the Misericordia Hospital actually where we would go and 
learned how to maintain interior plants back at that time too. Uh, the principal down at Stesco would bring in people from all over the world. There was people from China and Japan and, and all, of course the states and everything else. And, and we were kind of a fishbowl in many ways on vocational education. The third principal was Eric J. Harder from 1977 to 1981. He said, the popularity of W.P. Wagner High School continues to remain strong, as indicated by the increasing applications for admission being received at a time when general high school population is decreasing. The evidence of student activity in work and play illustrated in the yearbooks indicates many of the reasons why young people would wish to enroll and become a part of the demanding yet rewarding learning experience available here. Congratulations to you all, Mr. Harder. My name is Lori Lermo at the time. That's my maiden name, and I graduated in 1979, 1980. And back then, this was a really different kind of school. Um, the smoking hall was the hub. It was the meeting place. It was where everything took place. Um, making plans for the weekend, or just even the day-to-day -day interaction with your students, fellow students and teachers, it was the place to be. The third year people, when they came back, we produced the yearbook which meant we went around and took pictures of all the different trades areas and as well as the academic areas in the school and uh, produced the prints and pasted up the pages and sent them away to Winnipeg for printing of our yearbook. It, it was quite a lot of work and took about the last couple or three months of the school year in order to produce these things. But the kids always enjoyed it quite a lot. Uh, got into trouble a couple of times because of pictures that got in that I didn't notice. Uh, or at least officially I didn't notice them. But nevertheless, uh, we had a lot of fun. The kids had a lot of fun and got a lot of, accomplish out of uh, accomplishment out of just being able to see something from a start to a finish for a change in their lives. Um, and I think the person that enjoyed it most was me. Uh, an ex-student came in and I told him, I says, how come this computer doesn't work sometimes? Oh, he says, you have to turn the switch on. I says, well, where's the switch? He says, well, it's in the other classroom. So the switch to operate that computer was in a different room. <laughs> Nobody told me. <laughs> so those are the kind of fun things that you kind of remember, you know. The fourth principal was Benjamin J. Mack from 1982 to 1991. In his words, may I extend my sincere thanks to the Warrior Yearbook staff for their hard work to make the yearbook such an excellent record of the school's activities for the past years. Many memories the book will bring back are the impressions that visitors comment on when they step into our school. Some of these are excellent facilities in which to learn, purposeful and friendly students, dynamic and helpful staff, and a general atmosphere which promotes learning. As the years go by, many of you will find that these yearbooks become increasingly dear to you. It will bring back the pleasant memories of your days at W.P. Wagner High School. Students would come back with paychecks that exceeded the teachers' uh, paychecks, uh, especially from food prep where they became chefs. In 1982, Wayne Gretzky of the Edmonton Oilers paid a visit to W.P. Wagner for a presentation on drugs in sports. He was assisted by Corporal Murdoch of the RCMP from the Crime Prevention Unit. Also on stage were School Resource Officer Milton and Scott Shoemake, School Council President. Fred Bloom graduated in 1984. Standing six foot five and weighing 363 pounds, he won the heavyweight division in the city for all three years in wrestling. He never lost a match. He also competed in super heavyweight division in Olympic weightlifting. Here too, he won every match he entered. A staff member, I was fortunate to do that. I'd, uh, after graduation, I'd uh, gone off to Olds College and graduated from two-year horticulture and greenhouse program and uh, had the opportunity to apply for the horticulture technician job back here. So I started in uh, the fall of 1979 and uh, was here until 1987. We had a, uh, I got a call at 2.30 in the morning about a greenhouse being on fire and I came in from Devon at that time. I lived out in Devon and uh, came in and uh, we were standing here and yes, the greenhouse had burnt down. I was with the fire department and 
They were telling me how it was arson related and uh, the entire uh, greenhouse was gone at that time. And we spent the next year and a half to two years rebuilding the greenhouse, getting it rebuilt. And uh, it's as it is today, uh, it is slightly wider than the original, uh, same length and uh, uh, newer technology for the late 80s at that time that was available and uh, glad to see it back standing in, in full use uh, for the program here at WP Wagner. The bedding plant sale, which was an annual event, and there was a lot of work, but it was pretty amazing because the students were able to work quite independently. They would gather in groups and decide who was going to be the quality control person, who would be the waterer, and they sort of divided up according to the various jobs and they were really wonderful the way they all got together and produced these amazing plants. The bell rings, you work hard, you get homework, the bell rings, you march down to the next classroom, but these kids got to go down to a greenhouse or out to a garden or out to trees and shrubs and, and uh, it was like a summer holiday for free and credits. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you couldn't, uh, you just couldn't get anything better that, uh, than that in a school. Yeah. yeah. Very, very interesting. We had small classes and the kids were just phenomenal. They were what you call, I guess, street smart. You always knew where you stood with them and uh, they were just great. And then the school changed over. It was just different. We had bigger classes and the kids were a lot younger and uh, like I said, it was just different, but we had great staff and a lot of nice kids, so. In 1989, I attended a mud volleyball tournament in Marsden, Saskatchewan. And when I came to Wagner, we started one in the spring of 1990 with the help of Mark Johnson, our school resource officer, and other school resource officers. We set up a big orange tarp in the back, had a bunch of mud and had a great day. And that tradition lasted for 12 years here at Wagner. We've had it morph to four courts with bleachers and a full organized schedule run by the phys ed department. We had hot dogs and water gun fights and a dunk tank and the firemen hosing us off. Um, we even had outdoor showers created just for us so that we wouldn't plug the school showers inside. If you were here in the 90s and the early 2000s, you probably have good memories of mud volleyball. The school sort of shifted focus and switched just into a science and technology viewpoint and reduced a lot of the trades programs because that was the trend. Enrollment dropped steadily in the late 80s from a peak of 1,200 students to only 325. In September of 1992, W.P. Wagner High School rebranded as the School of Science and Technology. Some vocational courses were maintained and still flourish today. Some new courses were added. With these changes, Wagner quickly became a school to go to. Our unique program called FIRST, Focus in Research, Science and Technology, including its mentorship component, attracted high academic students. And the population quickly began to grow again. Well, congr congratulations to everybody here at uh, W.P. Wagner High School. Uh, it's great to be back in this school and uh, in the uh, learning center that was, I was honored by being named after me uh, many, many years ago. Uh, it's so good to hear about this school, the high achieve achievements of students, the, uh, uh, the student-centeredness and the fact that it's such a, a school that so many people want to go to today. It's wonderful to hear. Um, when I think of this school, I go back to the about 1992-93 and um, think about the students and staff who were here at W.P. Wagner School at that time. Uh, they're a group of people that took some uh, real risks and uh, I think showed some, some real courage. Unlike the students today, the students who came here in 1992 or 93 had no idea what they were coming to. This was a brand new program. They were the first group of students to take part in the academic program here at W.P. Wagner School. Uh, some of those students were the first students to be part of what we called the FIRST program. It was a new idea. These were the first students to be part of student teams, to take part in the arts programs, to, to have some of the technology experiences that we were able to provide. It was exciting, but it was all brand new. 
These students, I thought, were absolutely amazing. They embraced uncertainty. Science students were willing to go out and work with real scientists. Uh, computer students were doing things in the labs that weren't, that weren't happening anywhere else in the city. They created new events. They set up a student council. Um, we had our first touch of class activity. Uh, we had the first of the big mega graduations here. Um, they celebrated and enjoyed the highlights of the previous program. Uh, they had fun with the mud volleyball activities. They took part in some of the options uh, like uh, beauty culture and automotives that were part of the program that was here before. And what I remember so much was they lived through the renovations. I remember students saying, I've got a class up in the, in the classroom wing. How do I get to the gymnasium? The whole middle of the school was blocked off. Or students, when they first saw the, the, the computer labs, just how excited they were. It was pretty cool. They embraced their school, uh, they embraced their friends, and together they created a base which I think still shows here at W.P. Wagner School. I was really proud of what our students did. I, but I was also really proud of who they were. And one of the things I was so pleased with was the ability of our new students who came to W.P. Wagner School to embrace the students who were here already. And together they provided a wonderful student body and worked together so, so well. This all happened, I think, because we had an amazing staff. Teachers, office staff, teacher aides, custodians. They were all here taking risks and being, I think, real innovators. They were willing to try anything. We would try something. If it didn't work, we'd try something else. If it did work, we'd look at ways to improve it. It was a very exciting time um, at, the, at the school. Um, we implemented what we called a no-cut policy in our, in our, in our, for our, our athletic teams. Um, we created a new school logo, new school colors, no, new school ident identity. We used the technology in this building like it was like no other place in the city at the time. It was, it was cool. Uh, we developed fine arts programs. We experimented with something called directed study. We got a football team going. These things happened because of the, our staff. Each one of our staff members felt that they were here to make a difference and what a difference they made. I think the difference they made probably reflects still in programming here at the school. And just, you know, just to finally to say to students and uh, staff here at W.P. Wagner in the year 2019, um, I think your, ex your, your examples of extraordinary people who continue to do extraordinary things here at W.P. Wagner, congratulations. In 1992, Wagner changed its school colors from gold and black to today's red, white, and blue. When they first built the computer labs, somebody downtown had eliminated all the plugins. And I remember walking past there one day and looking and thinking, there's no plugins in this computer lab. And at that point, Rob McPhee was the principal, and we uh, got together and talked about it. And that's why there's raceways for the computers in the library to plug in, because they, when they were constructing, it was a cost-saving measure to take the plugins, to take the plugs out came here, the science department were all runners and so I got forced to run through Mill Creek Ravine. Um, we had our science meetings once a week running through the ravine and if uh, the science department head got too serious we'd just run faster and leave him behind. Um, that was Gary Berge, I hope he gets to speak and defend himself here. Joel Fawcett Arsenault entered Wagner in 1996. Joel's life both as a professional and a volunteer has been dedicated to supporting individuals, families and organizations. She was a founding member of SACRED, the Society for Assisted Cooperative Recovery from Eating Disorders. Her contributions to Society have earned her many awards. You know, our open houses were always so successful. Uh, the response from, you know, from parents was always really positive. Our school grew uh, very quickly uh, from the beginning in 92 to pretty much full capacity within about five years, I think. Uh, over a thousand students. So yeah, that was exciting. Hi, I'm Maureen Yates and I'm reading some memories from Jennifer Lawley. These are in her own words. 
Rob McPhee and I were looking at a transition from the old trade and services to a school of science and technology, but we couldn't change the name of the school. The first years I looked at the different phases of construction and keeping the students safe during this period. I was responsible for designing the student services area and help with science labs. I was happy when the new school, in the new school, Steve hugged a pillar and said, I love my new school. I wanted the students to help me to love their new school and looked at new rules and traditions. Students and I went out to the communities, universities and colleges to promote this new school. I wanted to create a sustained high school where every student would be welcome. I had a first-rate leadership team that went on to be successful leaders as principals of their own schools. I was excited to learn that the new principal of W.P. Wagner, the current principal, was one of my leadership team, Jennifer Allen. When the superintendent offered me the principalship at Ross Shepherd in 2000, I found it hard to say goodbye, and I will always remember my stay at W.P. Wagner. I thoroughly enjoyed Wagner annual mud volleyball and the incidents such as bomb threats because later I helped the police form the lockdown procedures for all Edmonton public schools. I was excited to see that WP Wagner is the student school of choice for so many students and has been full every single year since my departure. Making this change to a school of science and technology was one of the highlights of my career. I left my heart at WP Wagner. In 1998, the Wagner Warrior mascot underwent a gradual process of transformation and morphed into the new Wagner Warrior mascot. A new warrior ready for the 21st century. 1998 was a big year at WP Wagner with the introduction of a state-of-the-art health and wellness center. This facility was designed to promote healthy living for all of the students and staff. Angela Carbone was our original fitness trainer and she offered personal training programs, nutritional advice, and much more. Today, the facility is operated by Adrian Dorn, athletic therapist and fitness center consultant. Sean O'Neill graduated from Wagner in 2000. Sean was destined to become an archer. By the time he was in grade 12, Sean had won seven provincial and Canadian titles. In 1999, he became the Canadian indoor national champion at 16, he won the Vegas Open Archer Tournament, competing against 2,700 archers from around the world. In the World 3D Archer Championship, Sean achieved second place. Sean has proven to be a world-class archer. Mr. John Beaton was principal from 2001 to 2006. Mr. Beaton says, W.P. Wagner is a school with a reputation for academic, athletic, and artistic success. Our achievement results continue to improve so that they are among some of the highest in the city. Many activities make Wagner unique. A touch of class, pep rallies, the United Nations Day for the Elimination of Discrimination, Math Street Boys, Wagstock, and many others. These events are memorable, but the true magic of Wagner is in the communal spirit of adventure and openness to try new things. Sean Bell started at W.P. Wagner High School in the fall of 2000, selected to Canada's World Junior Hockey Team in 2004 and 2005. He also played in the WHL and was drafted in the first round by the NHL's St. Louis Blues. Bell went on to play for the Minnesota Wild, Montreal Canadiens, Edmonton Oilers, and the Colorado Avalanche. It was special. Staff was outstanding. Um, it was just such a wonderful group uh, just working together on everything from things with the kids outdoor mud volleyball to grad to awards to it just it was a really fine oiled machine <laughs> we had good times Jeff Hecht graduated from Wagner football in 2005 he went on and played football for the St. Mary's Huskies and received a university degree in business. In 2011, he signed a professional football contract in the CFL and has played for eight years as a defensive back. He has played for Montreal, Calgary, where he helped them win a Grey Cup in 2014, Saskatchewan, and he is currently playing for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. I was the art teacher and I introduced the pottery program. It's great to see that it's getting bigger and better every year. In, in my class, we had kids dissecting a cow eyeball and dissecting a video camera 
uh, side by side to see the parts that were the same. So that kind of teaching was what we, we really strived for back in the 90s when we were working here. This uh, environment was just so alive with that. It was a tremendous school to be at. The uh, kids were knocking on the door to get in here. We were constantly oversubscribed. And it's wonderful working in that environment where you know that you're the place to be. When a person does teach here, you realize how important the staff is. It's a great building. The kids are wonderful. Um, it, it was a great place to, uh, to end my career. It's great to be back at W.P. Wagner. W.P. Wagner was probably my favorite school at all the different schools that I worked at. And what really stands out in my mind is phenomenal kids, excellent teaching staff, and an outstanding supportive parent group. My first year here, uh, we ended up talking to a lot of teachers, a lot of students, and that's when we decided to move into changing up the colors and creating a new logo, which I still see in place today. The reason I said uh, outstanding students, uh, it, uh, it goes all the way back to that first graduating class. They did some phenomenal events at our school. They pulled in the community. And what I liked about the students here is they were personable. They helped people that were unknown to the school. Whenever they came in, they opened up doors for them. The number of programs W.P. Wagner had, there's a lot of unique specialty programs here, like the first program, the band program, horticulture, um, pottery those were things that kept students connected in fact one year our student union president uh, he ended up indicating that Wagner was special to him because it seemed like there was a place for every student that ended up coming to the school the outstanding staff made that possible we had very very talented teachers and still have it, Wagner is sort of the best kept secret in town and the students got phenomenal results, were very connected, positive inf influences. The parent community, always, always supportive. Some phenomenal people that w both supported the music program, the first program, as well as the school in general. And I think they really recognize that Wagner was kind of a unique, special school for their students. Thinking back uh, over my nine years here, um, I was always impressed with the various uh, activities that went on. And it started early. We tried to get students accustomed to the school by the Warrior Friends evening where we brought them in prior to them coming to school in September. Then a huge welcome week and we had the unbelievable leadership and staff that put together some phenomenal events. A lot of the things that were near and dear to me, uh, Remembrance Day, that was always a special occurrence. And you could hear a pin drop for over an hour, if, and that demonstrates the amount of respect students ended up having. For Other events, uh, like the um, Touch of Class was a phenomenal event. The, the Halloween, uh, all staff and students ended up uh, getting decked out for Halloween, and some of the costumes were unbelievable. Then when you went throughout the year, the uh, fundraiser to uh, assist uh, cancer patients, that continued to grow. Every year the amount that was raised uh, got higher and higher and I believe the last year that we did it here it was close to a half a million dollars. And when you end up getting into the spring events, one of the things we implemented here, and uh, we did it mainly because we didn't want students to skip on the last day of school, we ended up establishing the grade 12 water fight. And we ended up asking staff and department heads to get involved, and it was an unbelievable activity. Touch wood, nobody got hurt. <laughs> Um, one of the other events was uh, we started a, um, a foods uh, initiative that turned into sort of an international week and it was the Taste of Wagner uh, where students ended up bringing in a variety of foods and it was just awesome. Uh, the, that I'm happy to see uh, still continues at the school and it's good on the students because uh, Wagner even though at one time it wasn't as internationally diverse, it is now literally a school that has all forms and of different cultures that attend here. And guess what? They all get along. In closing, I just want to send a huge congratulation to the people that organized the 50th. Uh, W.P. Wagner will always be special school to me. Keep it going, Wagner. You're an unbelievable special place. Jen Kish was a graduate from W.P. Wagner High School in 2006. She started playing rugby in high school and began playing provincially at the age of 16. 
Jen quickly made the jump to Canada's U19 team and captained the squad in 2006 to 2007. She opened her Rugby Canada career with the 15s team, competing in the Three Nations Cup and the 2010 Women's World Cup. She was a member of Canada's sevens team that was runner-up at the 2013 Worlds in Russia. She was a finalist for the 2013 International Rugby Board Women's Player of the Year. In 2012 and 2013, Jen was named Canada Women's Sevens Team Player of the Year. One of the best female sevens in the world, Jen was captain of Canada's Women's Sevens Team in Rio 2016, where they won bronze in the inaugural Olympic Rugby Sevens Tournament. Jen says, talent will get you noticed, but a hard work will keep you noticed. Singer-songwriter Kayla Patrick graduated from W.P. Wagner in 2014. She has penned over 60 songs and performed at the Winspear, Edmonton's Folk Music Festival, the Big Valley Jamboree, and Wagner's annual Wagstock. She's won numerous awards, including Country Vocal Spotlight, Female Entertainer of the Year, Female Vocalist of the Year, and Co-Writer of the Year. In 2012, Kayla competed with over 1,300 entrants in Much Music's Coke Covers contest and placed in the top three. In 2017, Kayla released her debut single, Your Cigarettes. Thank you so much for coming out to celebrate 50 years of W.P. Wagner's school history and legacy. A lot has changed here over the years, from the time the school opened as a state-of-the-art trade school 50 years ago, to 25 years ago when we transitioned to the School of Science and Technology to today where we continue to look for new innovative ways to prepare our students for the future. Even over the last three years since I became principal, much has changed. This year we've opened our new campus EPSB STEAM program or Science, Technology, Engineering, Arts and Math. At the same time, we continue to offer other outstanding career and technology studies programming, culinary arts, cosmetology, design technology, horticulture, and more. Our student leaders continue to raise hundreds of thousands of dollars through our annual Wagathon Bikeathon for charities such as the Zebra Foundation, Scars Animal Rescue, and the Children's Heart Society. This year, our student leaders also hosted the Canadian Student Leadership Conference. Other student leaders have traveled internationally to carry out action research and to Ottawa to take part in encounters with Canada and even to present a bill in Parliament. We have a school student senate which helps us make decisions to make our school better for everyone. Our athletic teams have involved hundreds and hundreds of students and we have won numerous city championships in a variety of sports. Students from our Interactions program have even gone on to win medals in National Special Olympics championships. Our drama program continues to develop amazing productions and award-winning improvisers. Our bands have performed internationally and our new art gallery is scheduled to open next fall to showcase the talents of our many student artists. Our advanced placement program has really grown and we're now provincial leaders in the Capstone Research Program. It's really exciting to continue to look to the future, to continue to grow and find new ways to inspire our students, to help them build the foundations for their lives which will bring them dignity and fulfillment in their futures. I'm tremendously proud of our school, of our students, of our staff, of our past, and of the future that we'll create here together. Once a warrior, always a warrior. Congratulations, Wagner, on our 50th. Happy 50th anniversary, Wagner! Woo! Happy 50th, Wagner! Happy 50th, Warriors! Woo! Happy 50th! 50th Wagner! Wagner.